Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon, Song of Solomon 4. This is a chapter which is, perhaps, more adapted for private meditation than for rending in public. Nevertheless, as this is a communion season, and I trust that the most of us are partakers of the life of God, I could not resist reading it this evening. It is a love song, the song of the loves of Jesus. As he sets forth the beauties and charms of his church, may the same beauties and charms be found in every one of us through the grace which he imparts to us by his Spirit. May we, as parts of his mystical body, be fair and lovely in his esteem because he has bestowed upon us so much of his own loveliness. Let us walk so carefully with God that there may be nothing to put even a spot upon our garments, or to defile our grace given comeliness. Verse 1. Behold, you are fair, my love, behold, you are fair twice fair, first, through being washed in my blood and next, through being sanctified by my spirit. 1. You have dove's eyes within your locks. Jesus prizes the love of his people which flashes forth from their eyes as they look upon him. The good works of his people, like the locks of hair which are the beauty and glory of the female form, are the beauty of the church and of every individual believer. It is a beautiful thing to have the eyes of faith glistening between the locks of our good works to the praise and glory of God. 1. Your hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. O oh my soul, see that you have many such acceptable works of faith and labors of love. 2. Your teeth, those parts of our spiritual being with which we feed upon Christ, and masticate and assimilate the word. Your teeth. 2. Are like a flock of sheep that are evenly shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof every one bear twins, and none is barren among them. We should seek so to feed upon the word as to become fruitful by it. If we spiritually feed upon the flesh of Christ, we shall afterwards be the means of bringing forth an abundant harvest of holiness to his praise and honor. 3. Your lips are like a thread of scarlet and well they may be, for what is the for the believer to talk about but the scarlet of the Saviour's blood, that matchless bath in which we are washed whiter than snow? My mouth, be you filled with the praises of the Lord, that my lips may be like a thread of scarlet. 3. And your speech is comely. There is always a comeliness in that conversation which is full of Christ. So, beloved, let your conversation always be such as becomes the gospel of Christ. But that cannot be the case unless there is much of Christ in it. 3. Your temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within your locks. Those parts of us with which we think upon God's word should always be surrounded by good works. Doctrines in the head, without holiness in the life, are of no service. But when the temples are covered with the locks of righteousness, then are they like a piece of a pomegranate, acceptable both to God and men. 4. Your neck is like the Tower of David built for an armory. And what is this but our faith? Does not the neck join the body to the head, and is not faith that connecting link by which we are united to Christ? Oh, for that faith which is like the Tower of David built for an armory. It is sure to be assaulted, let it, therefore, be firmly founded and fully armed. 4. Whereon the hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty met. They hung up their bucklers in memory of their triumphs. Read the eleventh chapter of the Epistle to the Hebrews, which is a record of the victories of faith. The promises of God are also like these bucklers which are hung up in the armory. Let us be so familiar with them that we shall have them ready for use in every emergency. 5. Your two breasts are like two young rows that are twins which feed among the lilies. The ordinances of God's house are very delightful to Christ and to his people, too. And consequently, that part of our spiritual being which seeks to feed others and specially to nourish the young believer, is very precious in Christ's esteem.
When he has finished the description of his church, Christ says. 6. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh, and to the hill of frankincense. Our beloved has gone away from us until the day of his reappearing, until the night of his church's anxiety is over and the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Jesus has gone from earth, but where is he? He has gone to intercede for us before the throne of his Father. He has gone to where there are mountains of myrrh. Think, beloved, of the sweet perfume that always arises from his one great sacrifice for sins. Well may he compare it to a mountain of myrrh and to a hill of frankincense. 7. You are all fair, my love, there is no spot in you. Drink that truth in, Christian. If ever there was a honeycomb full of virgin honey, it is here. Though in yourself you are defiled, yet in the eyes of Jesus, looked upon as covered with his righteousness, you are all fair. No, more, there is no spot in you. You are as dear to him as though you had never sinned. Yes, in his sight you appear without a single fault. He has so cleansed you in his precious blood that there is no spot in you. 8. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon, look from the top of Mana, from the top of Shinar and Hermon, from the lion's den, from the mountains of the leopards. My heart, leave the world. Leave its sweet places, though Lebanon is full of fragrance, leave it. Leave the world's high places. Though the top of Mana may seem to reach to heaven. Leave even that to have communion with your Lord. Come out from among them, and be you separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. The best spots in the world are for you, O spouse of Christ, but lions dens and mountains of leopards. You are always in danger while you consort with worldlings, you are always in peril while you are entangled with the world, so get away from Lebanon, from Amana, from Shur and Hermon, leave everything for your Lord. 9. You have ravished my heart. I think the Septuagint reads it, you have unhearted me, as if Christ's people had taken away his heart so that it was all theirs, and not his any longer. You have ravished my heart. 9. My sister, my spouse, you have ravished my heart with one of your eyes, with one chain of your neck. The eyes of love and the neck of faith with its chain, hold captive the heart of Christ. So dear, so very dear to Christ, dearer I cannot be. The love wherewith God loves his sons, such is Christ's love to me. Oh, what a miracle of mercy it is that Christ, himself, should be unhearted by such foul and loathsome creatures as we were. Yet he loved us so that he would have us and, having determined to do so, he put a beauty upon us that is really now worthy of his love. I speak advisedly, for the righteousness of Christ and the sanctification of the Spirit have in them something so fair that Christ does not now love that which is unworthy of his love, that righteousness which he has himself worked in us now rightly claims his affection. 10. How fair is your love, my sister, my spouse F. Hear that, O spouse of Christ. Your love is often very cold, very feeble and, even at its best, it is not what you would have it to be, nor what it ought to be. Yet Jesus values it highly and says, How fair is your love, my sister, my spouse. 10. How much better is your love than wine? Yet he knows what the best wine is like for he is one day to drink it new with us in his father's kingdom, yet he says that the love of his people is much better than wine, yes, even than that wine. 10. And the smell of your ointments than all spices. You know that he has the smell of myrrh, and aloes, and cassa upon his garments when he comes out of the ivory palaces, yet he considers that his people's graces are sweeter than all the spices that ever grew. 11, 12. Your lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb, 
Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the smell of your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Oh, that my heart were like that at this moment. Jesus, shut the gates and shut out the world, and every wandering, wayward, sinful thought. Then shut yourself in my heart and walk in it as in a garden that is walled around into which no intruders dare enter. 13, 14. Your plants are an orchard of pomegranates, with pleasant fruits, camphor, with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. Oh, that this were fully true of us, that our thoughts, words, and actions, which are like the fruits of the garden, were as full of spices of heavenly fragrance as Jesus here declares that he thinks them to be. Yet, alas, how little we do for him, though he sets such store by our little that he regards it as much. 15. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Such should the whole church and each individual believer be. O oh my soul, be not only shut up for Christ, but be, when the time comes, open to do good to all the world. O, oh, that I might be like a well of living waters in my speech at all times. And that you, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever you are dealing with others, might be a well of living waters to every thirsty soul. Speak of Jesus wherever you go. Talk of Jesus whenever you can. You have been shut up and Christ has been in you, now be opened to give forth to others what he has given you. The chapter concludes with a delightful prayer. Let us, each one, pray it. 16. Awake, O north wind, and come, you south, blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my my garden, his garden. The church here, you see, desires to feel two opposite winds. Though it should be the rough north wind of affliction that blows upon her, if it will but make her spices flow, she will be glad. But if it is the soft south wind of blessed and hallowed fellowship with her Lord, she is equally pleased, for what she longs after is that her Lord may take delight in her.